Sure, yes, maybe we are getting a little bit chummy, a little bit buddy-buddy with the robot pen arm. Um, and I agree, we do have to be careful because we have to keep in mind that somewhere out there is probably an angry robot with one arm missing. And I'm assuming maybe it only has one arm left, but it is a robot and maybe it has many other arms that could do many other things. And maybe they are not all dedicated to uh, drafting or plotting or drawing or whatever this one is supposed to do. Um, anyways, today we're using this one for drawing. Here's the idea. And the idea of this drawing changed, shifted, and morphed many times over the process of the video. So I'll talk you through it. But basically, what we're doing here today is I drew a picture. First, the introduction of the human element. And then I pretty much just handed it over to the robot. And I had it try to redraw my picture. And then I had it try to redraw its own picture nine times. Um, let's just, let me show you what I did. I'll talk you through the whole process and I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, it could have gone a lot of different directions. There's whole sorts of different things. So uh, let's check it out. Now the first version of the drawing out of 10 total, I did by hand with the Kawiko Supra and Twisby black ink. Later on the robot arm did the next nine versions and then I'm going to combine all 10 of the drawings into like a 10 frame gif right so it'll be like a little weird morphing animation and when the robot arm draws I gave it a different pen the the uh, Muji aluminum fountain pen with platinum carbon ink because I feel like this pen is just a little bit better and it draws better just with the weight of itself with the with the Kawiko Supra this time I had to press a little bit harder than I wanted to and the robot arm is not good at drawing with pens where you have to press a little bit harder because it really just draws with the weight of the pen itself anyways anyways look here's the concept um have you ever played that game broken telephone where people sit in like a ring one person whispers like a sentence into one person's ear and then that person whispers a sentence into the next person's ear and then it it gets whispered all the way around right I think it's I think that's how the game works and then once it gets all the way around that person says it out loud and then everyone's like well that's not what I heard at all like you know and, and you try to see how much it's changed as it goes around the circle right for some reason thinking back now that doesn't seem like it should change that much but um anyways that's kind of the concept behind this in that uh I draw a picture I scan it in right and then I let the machine redraw it, and then I scan that in, and then I let the machine redraw that, so on and so forth. The first time it just redraws my picture, but after that it's just redrawing its own image. And then I scan all those in and layer them on top of each other, and then I turn it into a GIF like I mentioned, and it's like a weird little morphing thing, which I'll show you. Uh, now the weird thing here is I'm not sure I drew the right sort of picture. I have a few little regrets because I'm thinking the the reason I drew what I did here is because I was I was thinking hey I should draw like some weird like little wiggly morphy like organic looking swirls curves right because I think maybe maybe the machine will have more problems with drawing curves than like straight lines so I tried to draw a lot of curves very close to each other but thinking back maybe I should have it would have been more interesting and maybe I can do this in the future but maybe it would have been more interesting if I had done something like something more recognizable and intentional, like perhaps a portrait of a face, or maybe I should have done something far less intentional, uh, like just randomly scribbling on the paper. Um, because uh, if, if you look here, well, there's my finished hand drawing. It's okay. I've done better, better but it works for our purpose. The drawing itself doesn't matter that much. What you're going to see here is I scan it in, uh, and the problem is when I vectorize the drawing, and I'm going to show you a little bit of footage of the, the process of how I actually vectorize the drawing of one of the secondary drawings. This is me actually um, editing it in Photoshop. This is, I think this is the first drawing that the, the machine drew. So I, I increase the contrast and everything a little bit, clean it up, and stuff, then I send it over to Illustrator. But when I vectorize it, the problem is 
uh, like in my initial drawing, I had a lot of dark areas and light areas, uh, had lines. The problem is when you vectorize it, it creates paths. And so it doesn't see dark areas and light areas. It just sees edges. So if I, cre if I draw one line, a lot of the times it, it actually draws two lines. It draws like a line for each side of one of my lines, right? Um, and so as the machine kept drawing each additional progressive drawing, and, and you'll see this because I'm going to show you all 10 drawings kind of all sped up there, it kind of in, increasingly turned into what looked like a, a mass of TV static. So it almost looked like the drawing was kind of imploding and disintegrating, uh, kind of just kind of maybe looking kind of looking like you were looking down at uh, like the sidewalk, just kind of like the texture of cement or gravel or something. When it, at first I had you know, drawn all these details, there was still a lot of detail, but there was a lot less contrast. Before we look at those nine drawings, look at this very interesting image showing the, like the order of the paths and the groups for this machine. I could not figure out a better way to get it to not just jump all over the paper. There are so many options in uh, Inkscape and in, in Illustrator and in, in the plugin uh, for AxiDraw in Inkscape for optimizing paths and none of them seem to solve this problem. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but sometimes it would draw a line and just search for the next line, just the farthest away possible to draw. And then after that, the next one farthest away possible to draw after that. Um, if you look in the description of this video, I'll show you. I, I recorded all the elapsed times for each drawing. Um, I, I forgot to record it for number two and number four, but for the rest of them, for the first drawing, there's an elapsed time of 43 minutes with a total path length drawn of 21 meters, but there was a total distance moved of 160 meters. Look how much wasted movement that is. Uh, and then the time w increased up to like number, uh, number six. It took an hour and 20 minutes, but the length of the path was still barely, it went up one meter. It took more than twice as long, but the length of the path drawn was still only 22 meters, but the total distance moved was almost 300 meters as opposed to 160 meters. Uh, so it just got less, uh, like the paths got smaller and smaller. They're just like little tiny chunks instead of longer paths. There were like little, little dots and circles and chunks, uh, less organized, less, I don't, it all just kind of started falling apart. After that, uh, like number seven was slightly better. It went down from an hour and 20 to an hour and four minutes. Uh, but then it just kind of waffled from there. It's just kind of weird, kind of frustrating, but I didn't try to solve it too much. I just, I'm kind of more in the observe and report stage, right? Also, I only had to refill the pen once the whole time. There was one weird thing where uh, in the middle of maybe the third or the fourth one, I noticed that the paper was starting to warp up in the middle so much. Uh, you can see this in this footage here where I had to pause it in the middle and increase how much the machine was lifting up the pen so that it wouldn't be touching the paper as it was moving it around in the raised position. But other than that, it seemed to work pretty good. And now I'm going to show you these GIFs, the final finished product. Now it's pretty weird because I have two different GIFs to show you. This one is the one where I have adjusted the GIF. I've adjusted each finished drawing because they were warping, okay? The final GIF was much skinnier laterally than my first drawing, maybe almost half as wide. It looks pretty cool. Um, see, looking here at the second GIF, you can see that it's just, it was very, I don't know how else to explain it, very warpy. And I think it looks very cool. I just don't know really how to account for this. Like where were the errors coming from? Was it one of the programs I was using? Like it, there's a lot of places where it could have come from. The scanner could have come from Photoshop, from Illustrator, from Inkscape, from, uh, I think it's probably most likely it came from somewhere in the Axie Draw actual mechanical drawing system, right? Why did it change so much from the first drawing to the final drawing? 
anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. I enjoyed this weird little mix of analog and digital, right? This way of creating like a weird little morphing drawing. I'm running through all of the drawings here again at the end a little more slowly. And if you want to look at them uh, on your own time, there's a link in the description to, uh, I'll make a little page on my website where you can look at the GIFs, look at each drawing individually, uh, one by one, so you don't have to look at them in a video. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any feedback about the process or what else could be done with this. I have some other ideas too, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Love y'all.